I'm Altanai, and uh, so this page I've made on Weba TV using Geda channels. It's live. You can all go to this IP, and you know you could have a, a inter peer to peer chat. Right? It's uh, up for the time, and. Uh, This is the topic which we are discussing today. It's about, uh, it's not just IoT, it's like how do you have media streaming in IoT over WebRTC. So uh, before that, how many of you know what is WebRTC? Come on. One, two, three, four, okay, great. Five, six, cool. So uh, WebRTC is all about real-time communication, okay, on the web. So initially, as we know, the web-based communication, VoIP, was Skype, Facebook calls, you know, two, three Viber and stuff like that. Then, um, it, then when people started to uh, view it as a very potential source, and uh, it became standardized. Now it's a standard Google, Mozilla, Oprah supported technique of you know uh, doing video calls over the internet. Um, so. Uh, using WebRTC, you could just open a web page and make a call to the other person without having any installations, plugins, downloads, flash, um, you know, silver light, nothing. It's just simple. It's in the browser. You can use it from your phone, tablet, mobiles, anything. It's just peer-to-peer -peer communication. All right. So from there, so this is a bit about me. I am in telecom industry for the past four years. And this is what uh, this is the book I've written. This is the blog I maintain, and that's it. So, okay. <clears throat> so we, what we'd be discussing today is uh, four things. The uh, first thing that we'd be discussing is um, how to control machines remotely, like from the web page. How can you switch on the lights, fans, and stuff? That's like the first thing that one needs to do when one enters into IoT. The second thing uh, that we'd be discussing is how to transmit media from a remote machine to our web, okay, so that we could access it anywhere. And the third thing is, you know, controlling a robot using all this, like viewing where the robot is going and controlling it, you know, uh, navigating it based on the uh, stream feed that we are getting. The fourth thing that we'd be discussing is how to take this feed and broadcast it publicly so that like anybody could uh, view it and control the robot. So if we don't stream it publicly and we just use one server, it will you know, um, result in heavy load and it will just crash. So we have to use live stream mechanisms, CDNs to do that. So it discusses end-to-end -end IoT, robot, streaming, and full. So yeah, these are the four things. So this is like plain IoT. We, I, I drew this myself, but we see stuff like this about IoT all the time. So uh, for the first thing, the basic IoT controlling uh, light fan from your, uh, you know, from the web page. These are the basic components required. So, um, so I have the B model Raspberry. I have a SD card, and uh, for the communication, I just use my uh, dongle the 3G dongle, and I could not bring the motor, but you know, the LEDs are there. So I just control this using the web page. So this is Raspberry Pi, it's like, you, you know about Raspberry Pi, right? Yeah, okay. So this is a simple uh, switch. So basically, we just activate the GPIO from a PHP script, which is hosted on a server. And this is a relay. We obviously need relay to connect machines in real time. And this is uh, what we made. And we could not bring the setup here, but I've uploaded a rough demo to YouTube. You could see it here. This is the web page. This is how we control it. So from the web page, it goes to the server. From server, it goes to the Pi, which also has, which is also connected to internet using the dongle. You can see. Uh, the dongle is connected below. It, it is, uh, the cover is out. So there, and the motor and the lights are connected to it. Okay. So 
now is the uh, media streaming how can you stream from a remote machine to uh, any uh, you know web page over the internet so this is what we are going to use webrtc no plugins no installations no downloads this simple communication um so this is what webrtc is in brief although we are not going into details of this so webrtc has all these components you know it has the uh, audio video management it has the peer connection management and it has you know basic image enhancements and um, controls uh, for the stabilization of video audio it has syncing so all this stuff is already there this is the problem the codec supported by webrtc is not the codec supported by majority of the machines the majority of the machines out here like uh, the webcams the streaming servers they support h264 you know generic old protocols but uh, webrtc came out with vp8 and uh, opus so what we do is okay so um, okay so before that like for example let's say we have a webrtc endpoint on the machine and a webrtc endpoint with us for example um you know pi has an operating system so install ice fusel on this it already comes with webrtc support and uh, again that is connected to web that is connected to my machine so i am able to see what is being transmitted from uh, the raspberry pi using a simple webcam normal uh, logitech webcam so it will turn out to be something like this okay so this is the web page i am seeing this is raspberry pi it has a uh, ice visual browser so it is a simple webrtc uh, you know peer to peer call so i am able to see because i am also on webrtc um yeah supposedly we don't consider the uh, transcoding right now let's say it is just peer webrtc to webrtc then what can we do with such a situation so we could have all these things here for example um okay so <clears throat> this is like image uh, this is movement detection so these buttons you see it detects where uh, the movement is how does it detect i have one level abstraction so this is how it detects it has differential pattern so with with just a media stream coming from a raspberry pi machine you could have multiple things you know for example i'm just uh, taking video here you can also take audio you can do face detection movement detection you know you could have surveillance cameras and detect motion and uh, it can trigger your web page from any part of the world okay um so um this is an i have not implemented all of them i have just done uh, motion detection but you have face recognition api is a number of them you know you can have face tracking head tracker.js for audio recognition you can have multiple things this web audio api provided by uh, it's just, it's getting standardized by all browsers then you have 3.js and you have webgl these are all about motion detection and you know uh, virtual reality augmented reality mostly augmented reality okay uh this is how webrtc structure would look like those who know about webrtc you know it the normal webrtc is not as simple as it looks it requires um certain things like you could see turn and stun so stun is inside turn so let's consider just turn turn is all about our you know firewall traverses the video packets by themselves they cannot traverse your uh, firewalls and enterprise policies so you need turn server for that purpose and there is an open source turn server provided on source code by it's called coturn and rfc 5677 so that these are all open source products by the way there's nothing proprietary uh, nothing closed source everything is out there all, all the source code is available okay so this is the robot navigation part uh we are not uh, on the codec conversion yet so this is about webrtc based robot control okay so suppose now that we are getting the media stream 
and we can access the light bulb fans. So how do we combine all that to make a robot? So <clears throat> for that purpose, the uh, essential thing here is the ECU. Okay, so ECU is the electronic control unit. Almost all the robots have it. It comes in uh, various ways. I just use Arduino because I'm not really into electronics that greatly. So uh, you can use an Arduino chip and you can use Arduino to, con to control the DC motors and that will control the rear wheels. The front wheels just go wherever the flow is. And uh, with the Raspberry Pi, of course I have the webcam connected. The battery is connected to uh, external power source. So I use my phone bank, power bank for that purpose. Of course it's a lightweight robot, it doesn't have as much power. And uh, that's it. And the front logic is if, if from the web page I give two pins, one and one, it goes forward. If I do, I, I can just show you the next page, you could get a better idea. Yeah, this is how it works. It uh, navigates. I am controlling the machine remotely. And I am also able to see the live uh, WebRTC stream. Um, OK, so this is there. OK, so this is. This is the part which I described. So in this process that I just described, it is feasible, but it has a very, very serious limitation, which is about the uh, you know, WebRTC limitations. So WebRTC, it's, it's a uh, budding technology, and it's not supported on all the browsers, um, on many browsers. It doesn't have a native support at all. Okay, So uh, what we do for that is we broadcast it. We transcode it. Um, so for that purpose, we could. Let's, let's suppose the uh, load that we're expecting on the media stream is you know, uh, 10 viewers for every one player. For every one webcam which is publishing, it has 10 viewers. Then you could have a simple WebRTC multi-peer. Like a single WebRTC stream, you know, given uh, optimum bandwidth like 3, 4, can have 10 uh, you know, simultaneous peers which it can broadcast to. So we could have a you know, simple, just put it on Amazon and let it broadcast. By the way, WebRTC is peer-to-peer. -peer, so your own bandwidth should be high enough. The centralized Amazon thing that I just mentioned is about the signaling, which is like controlling things. Um, it doesn't participate in media streaming at all. So that will come at the end. So by broadcasting, I mean I just want multiple viewers for single publisher. So it could be channel, it could be my own algorithm, it could be through relays, as you know you could see here. So I've, I've just I tried all the four alternatives, and uh, right now the third alternative that I show here, would, I, I go with that. So <clears throat> this is like um, suppose we have more than ten. Suppose for every one publisher we have like you know 20 30 viewers then one machine cannot stream to so many peers it cannot have a simultaneous peer connection it'll crash okay it'll just it'll just uh, hang so what we do is we have our publisher which is coming from the pi then this is the relay point so one uh, relay point will take the stream put it on another three different channels then that three different channels will go to three different relays. They'll put it on three more different channels. So like that, like a fusion reaction, it just spread out. So we could have multiple people. But even this has limitations. It cannot stream to so many people. You know, it, for every uh, one, we could have like 24 maximum. Maybe stretch it, have really nice bandwidth, 35. That's it. If you want, if you are expecting load of like 100, 200, thousands, then this is the way to go. This is what I've been telling from the start. Uh, so this is what we do now from the webcam. We have a web RTC stream coming in uh, through the uh, webcam, through the Raspberry Pi, coming to my own browser, which is Firefox. Now I have got the stream from the remote machine. How I handle from here is the rest of the story. What I have done here is I use uh, JS scripts 
to get the frames, put them in a uh, WebP image format, compress them, slice them, and uh, convert them to MP4. So this happens in a chunk by chunk format. And those I send to the Wowza streaming server. Wowza streaming server, if you know, it uh, has this transcoding engine real time where uh, you know it transcodes to multiple formats for uh, FLB, for iOS, uh, M3U8 format, uh, F4M format, RTMP, RTSP, it handles from there. And that Wowza streams we give to the CDN network. CDN network, uh, of course, you know, uh, it handles the load. So you, you could have you know, as much load as possible. The CDN will make sure that every end user gets the stream on time without lags. Uh, it, it creates multiple server instances, keeps the cache and all that. And that is how we can give it to non-WebRTC browsers. We can give it to smart TVs. We can put a display unit on the fridge and transmit there. We can, uh, we can just give the stream coming from the remote machine to any display device. OK? Um, and this is a small uh, POC of how I am, uh, it's not visible, but how it uh, takes it, the WAMI recorder and how it creates the frames. The key thing here is achieving a frame rate decent enough to, uh, you know, to have the quality uh, thing in between. Because right now, with everything I have tried, multiple approaches, I cannot uh, reach a different frame rate. And if the frame rate is there, then there's no uh, quality. So that is the challenge right now. But uh, there is a solution. WebRTC in few months, I guess, will have H.264. So is the declaration in documents. So when that comes, uh, we could have WebRTC uh, doing great things. And this is pretty much the end. So it is, as you see, it is uh, very cost effective. I have used basic products. Um, there is no proprietary uh, you know, uh, software or hardware that I require to do all that that I've done. It can uh, be expanded to multiple uh, domains. Like you could have um, machine learning, augmented reality, sensor to server, anything that you want to do with IoT and media streams. And that's pretty much it. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. VLC does that. Okay. Okay. VLC, I'm not using it because I wanted to curb the potentials of WebRTC. So we could also do the same via, uh, in, on Raspberry Pi, we have products like Motion. We have GStreamer. Uh, these are the softwares which are meant for Raspberry Pi. FFmpeg is a very strong library. It captures and it sends. But then these uh, have their limitations. So I. I specifically wanted to use WebRTC's capabilities because WebRTC uh, is peer-to-peer. -peer. It, it uh, has data channels. Um, you know, audio, video stream is separate. So if we use these uh, GStreamer, FFmpeg products, then we could do everything, but they will not do WebRTC. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so uh, controlling lights and fans, we just need to send uh, any text from the web page to the uh, PHP uh, script running on uh, Pi. Okay, so yeah, that that is in that is only for the uh, media stream. So right now, I'm not controlling right and fans using data channel of WebRTC, although I could do that for the control of. Uh, Oh, the machines, the GPIO pins, it's just a simple PHP script on Ajax. So that, that's how the uh, command transfers. And uh, there, it, I use, uh, there's a very nice library, uh, GPIO library by Drogon or somebody. And uh, I, I just use that in the PHP program. And I uh, give power to the switches, the pins. The pins give it to the relay, and the relay can switch the machine. OK, anything? Wowza Media Server, yeah. 
वाओ जा वाओ जा डब्ल्यू ओ डब्ल्यू जेड ए वाओजा इज पेड देर इज एन ओपन सोर्स आई थिंक फ्री ट्रायल वाओजा बट आई यूज द पेड वन सो इट इट टेक्स सम अमाउंट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट टू लाइव स्ट्रीम इट यू नो सो दैट पार्ट इज ओके ओके Yeah, other libraries. If you are not particular about WebRTC and you don't have a specific uh, use case pertaining to WebRTC, you could also use VLC, GStreamer. Yeah. Uh, so Wowza does uh, multi-format transcoding, real time. It also does uh, adaptive streaming. For example, it will stream at 140, 240, uh, 34. kinds of so all kind of players can connect to wowza and it has rtsp rtmp http so uh, supposedly there's a browser called supposedly i make a browser called altanai mini you know i i this the stream coming from uh, wow uh, wowza transcoded stream at least one of the stream is ought to play in my browser even if i don't have webrtc support only the uh, browsers which are like uh, you know really uh, on the edge for example firefox opera only they have webrtc support as of now internet explorer doesn't have it safari doesn't have it multiple unknown mini browsers don't have it so that's where this process comes into picture so and uh, supposedly i want the stream to be played on my mobile without using browser like you know just uh, the way uh, rtmp stream plays so for that purpose uh, the transcode transcoding of the codec audio video codec is really really required 